Welcome to the American Planning Association podcast. This episode is part of our series on planning the autonomous future, which looks at the many ways in which autonomous technology will impact our cities and regions, mobility, and the planning profession. I'm your host, Jennifer Hennigan, Deputy Research Director and Manager of the Green Communities Center at the American Planning Association. In this introductory episode, we'll be talking about why the American Planning Association is working on autonomous vehicles and how this technology is important to planners working in all types of communities and settings. With me today is my co-host, Kelly Coiner. Kelly is the founder and CEO of Mobility E3, and she also serves as a senior fellow at the Center for Regional Analysis and Schar School of Policy and Government at George Mason University. A veteran of the public, private, and nonprofit sectors, Kelly has served at all levels of government in the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. She served as an expert on a variety of transportation and performance evaluation research panels of the National Academy of Engineering and the Transportation Research Board. She has a long history in the transportation field, including service as the administrator of research and special programs at the U.S. Department of Transportation. She's the former executive director of the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission and previously served as chief of staff to the National Capital Region Senior Policy Group on Homeland Security and Emergency Management. So we're going to get started with a lot of ways to let um, transportation planners, land use planners, um, urban planners, rural planners, everyone sort of get to know what uh, this issue is about, and I, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about sort of what we're what we're up to and how the podcast fits in. Sure, I mean it's it's great to see so many more different types of organizations having conversations about autonomous vehicles. Um, now, I've only been in the whole world of autonomous vehicles for about a year now. Um, and in that time, I've been to a lot of different events hosted in a lot of different places uh, where people are talking about the future and lots of big ideas and big things going on. But there hasn't been a lot of conversation that brings it down to the nuts and bolts of urban planning, which is what I'm concerned about and what APA's members are obviously concerned about. Um, you know, we have people who are who be themselves as futurists talking about these really grand ideas, which as a planner, you might think, well, that's really interesting. That's really cool. But, you know, I've got this guy up at the front counter who I've talked to five times already, but he still doesn't understand why he can't put a fence in the clear line of sight triangle. And so connecting those things is really what I think is important because autonomous vehicles will affect that clear line of sight triangle, and they will end up affecting what you have in your fence regulations down the road. So this really is an issue that planners need to start thinking about, and not just planners who are the head of a huge metropolitan planning organization, but planners in every town, big town, small town, urban, rural, it's going to affect everyone. So that's why we need to start talking about it and getting ready for it. So, you know, I'm not a planner. The good question is for what I am. I'm a lawyer by training. I've worked in the transportation field for an awfully long time. And last year, when I went to the meeting in New York, I was really skeptical. I was subbing in for somebody else uh, from Easy Mile who was going to talk about AVs and how they worked. And I thought, this is really a dog of an assignment. I'm going to be at 8 o'clock in the morning in Manhattan, and nobody is going to be there. And sure enough, when I showed up at 7.30, there was no one there. And by 8.05, it was standing room only. And it certainly wasn't because of us. It's about the topic, and it's about all the things that people want to learn and understand. And the first thing that they want to understand is, is this something real that I need to worry about right now? And what's really interesting to me is that in this really short time, people are stopping asking that question. Now they say, what do I need to do about it? I have a mayor who wants to know about it. I have a city councilman who wants to know about it. My city manager wants to know how we're going to manage this. And um, there's a real hunger for practical solutions um, that will make AV something that really contribute to the life of a community and are not something scary. Yeah, things have moved really quickly in the last year, and that's done a lot to get us from, you know, is this happening to this is happening. And we have, uh, within the last year, 
11 of the largest automakers in the world have said that within the next three to four years, they're going to have autonomous vehicles on the road. And we've got Tesla that's already out there with these vehicles. In the last year, I've gone from a fly-by-night scenario planning session about how to put AV shuttles on the street to now I am the proud CEO of Me3, Mobility E3, and we're working to help communities figure out how they can have shuttles now. And one of the really exciting things, and we're going to talk about it in the podcast, is that um, the OEMs have said they're going to have these on the streets really soon, but the shuttle providers, the people that I like to say are community speed AVs, were the first to do AVs in the United States. Right. So can you help us out with a little Autonomous Vehicles 101 as a transportation expert, getting very down to the basics? What are autonomous vehicles? Wow, that is a really hard question, and we should probably spend a lot more time on it to get people up to speed. But It seems simple, but I know it's also a very right. big question. So let's start with sort of the, the common view of it, which is it's a driverless car. And that's probably not a really helpful one. I prefer to call it an automated mobility system, which sounds pretty clunky in the way we talk about it. Most of us talk about AVs. And there's, there is new language and new ways to think about that to understand what it is. And we're going to spend a nice time in the podcast sort of going through the really detailed version of AV 101. But to put it this way, there are different levels of automation. Some of them we already see in our cars now, and we see them in our buses, and we see them in our trucks, automated braking systems and driver assist systems. And then we're a long way off from a car that drives itself around. And and by a long way off, I mean probably five or six years. And then more like 25 or 30 years before you see a huge deployment of those kinds of vehicles. So that's one way to think about the 101. But the real way to think about it is that um, we're really seeing an inflection point in transportation. And as we look at this automated approach to mobility, but it's combined with changes in the business models and the service models and a real appreciation of what that means for how our community works. It's going to transform everything. I always like to think of those little plastic cars that you know you used to get from McDonald's that you know transformed into other kinds of things. Um, and then they went back to what they were being. Only in this case, we're not going back to what we're being. <laughs> we're going to be transformed. And I think you know it's helpful to really think about that there are lots of, of things that are paradoxical about planning and policy in this area starting with that we haven't come up with a new name for what we're doing. So, you know, when we came up with a car, we called it a horseless carriage. We couldn't even quite think about, you know, what something else might be, an automobile. A self, and it, an automobile sort of suggests that it's self-driving, and it's not. Um, and now we're looking at a driverless car rather than coming up with some other some other kinds of names for it. And we, we do have different kinds of names. Some of them are really cute, like the Ollie by Local Motors or Milo by Easy Mile. Um, and some of them are a little more clunky, like Podcars, which sound like maybe we're going to be in some sort of um, sci-fi movie that runs amok and has killer cars. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely not the direction that we want to go. Um, but... One thing that I haven't heard as much about that I think is a really interesting aspect is we're not just talking about moving people. We're also talking about moving things. And so the you know, autonomy in terms of freight movement and deliveries, that's going to look a lot different too. Well, and I think that um, you know, there's a, another one where you're sort of standing on the edge. Um, for years we've talked about transportation and supply chain logistics and how we do deliveries. Um, 
And now we're talking about mobility of people and things. And that is a real transformation of the, the way that we talk about it. And it focuses on what the value is of those transportation pieces as opposed to the mechanics of it. Um, so autonomy is has applications that go across moving people and things and money, <laughs> and it's um, it's a complicated sort of integrated kind of thing. And then on the other end of it, the kinds of things that we're looking at um, in terms of AV vehicles bleed over from one to another. So, for example, there's a um, a new autonomous meter maid. And it's not that the a vehicle goes and collects money or receipts from a machine. It's that it drives someone to do that. Oh. Um, and so that's sort of a different concept. Or there's a you know sort of another kind of application when we think about how do we take care of roadways. Um, in Colorado, they've thought about well, what is a real problem we need to solve? And it was. The problem of the crash car. You know what a crash truck is or a crash vehicle is? Oh, when there's an accident on the highway. Ah, it's exactly what I thought, but it's not. So when you're striping a, uh, a highway or a roadway or you're epoxying it, using the glue to sort of patch those cracks from the winter back together again, they take a vehicle behind it that they call a crash vehicle. And it's, it's exactly what you think. It's so that It gets crashed into instead of the striping machine. Oh, wow. I thought, well, that's kind of dumb because they do get crashed into and they have people in them and people get hurt when they get crashed into. So what if we had an autonomous crash vehicle that followed along at seven miles an hour behind the epoxy machine or the striping machine and we put the person in the striping machine uh, so that you could have side on control of it, but you know one of the things that's so exciting is that you know this is this has become an everyday occurrence for me that someone has a new way of how we can use autonomy, particularly at the community level, because even though they were these big massive trucks out on the roadway in rural Colorado, they're slow speed their urban speed, their community speed. And so, you know, that sort of gives you another range of looking about it. Hey, Jennifer, we really need to talk about um, why we're here. And it was really that superb conference in uh, the fall of last year that really sort of set in motion the kinds of things that APA is looking to do with a playbook for cities and counties and regions and planners, most importantly, and those. You want to tell us about um, how we started on that conference? Definitely. Yeah, that was uh, our kickoff event to all of this work on AVs that we're doing. Um, So that was back in October 2017. We held a symposium with some of our great partners, uh, the National League of Cities, George Mason University, Mobility Lab, the uh, Eno Center for Transportation, and the Brookings Institution. Uh, So we were able to pull together this great group and brought about 90 of the nation's top thinkers on AV to this event to talk about all of the things that cities and regions need to do to get ready for autonomous vehicles. Um, We were able to get uh, Jeff Tumlin from Nelson Nygaard came and gave a great keynote address setting a real real visionary perspective on autonomous vehicles and uh, some of the benefits and also some of the potential drawbacks, that there are a lot of things we need to be concerned about to make sure that they don't end up increasing congestion and leading to greater sprawl. The thing I really liked about working with Jeff on this is that he really understood how to set the table for the rest of the conversation. And he also really encouraged us to start with a panel that was on um, equity and access and not start with the usual planning topics when we talk about this. So I thought maybe I'd take a minute to talk about what that panel was like. Yeah, definitely. I have a big shout out for George Mason. Um, Not only were they sponsors of the event, but my colleague at the university, Laurie Schindler, was one of the featured panelists. And she is probably the smartest person I know about what the impacts are going to be on um, 
the transportation workforce. And also in thinking about, um, she's really honest about who's going to get hurt and lose their jobs, but she's also working on how do we address that. We also heard from others talking about the opportunities that AVs might give us uh, in terms of more uh, freedom for people who have disabilities and being able to move forward and help for people who no longer are driving, particularly an older population. But the thing that was really interesting to me, and I think you know, you're going to um, see as a theme throughout all of the work that we're doing on this, is that transit was raised as an equity issue because of the possibility that these new systems uh, might really be hurt, uh, might really hurt ridership on transit. And so hearing it framed as something that we need to look at in the equity context is really interesting to me. And it rolled right over into the transportation network panel, um, where we didn't talk about the vehicles or the systems, but we talked about how they fit or should fit into the overall system. And talked some about what the regulatory landscape looks like, talked about the opportunities to marry AVs with electric vehicles for their environmental benefits, and talked about what we've learned from the ride-hailing companies and the challenges that they've posed to communities across the country and what that might mean in the autonomous space as well. I think it was really interesting that that panel also pointed out that AVs are going to touch everything and that they're, they have the potential to transform land use as well. So our third panel was all about land use and the built environment, which was great because we filled the stage with planners and academics talking about the wide range of issues that we're going to see uh, with the deployment of autonomous vehicles in terms of how it will affect uh, your compre- the comprehensive planning process, zoning ordinance, and other types of regulations. What will this look like in the CIP process when you're actually planning for installing technological components to the roadway and the system. How does that look? Um, And of course, lots of discussion on parking, which is something that everything seems to come back to with autonomous vehicles. How is this going to affect our existing parking lots? What are we going to do with all that space? And who makes the decisions on how we repurpose all of those acres and acres of asphalt that are sitting out there? So that was that was a really great discussion that we were able to have there, and it led in nicely to our lunchtime chat, which w- where we got to hear about a pilot project with the shuttle actually on the ground. Now, of course, the most important thing is that we got to eat. Well, yes, yeah. very important. And we had a lovely buffet, and I actually got to eat some too. But I am very <laughs> excited about the fireside chat that we had with Brian and with Linda. Um, Brian talking about what they're learning in Las Vegas and showing us sort of how the shuttle worked. It's always fun to see it. The only thing that's wrong with that shuttle is it doesn't have a cute name. Um, But that really laid the groundwork for people to be able to see, particularly from the transportation planning side, how pilots might roll out. And then we crowdsourced um, from all the participants Um, some answers to the kinds of things that cities and regions should have in their playbook. And I had a lot of fun with that. That was the best part of the day, was getting to hear from all of these really tremendously smart people from so many different backgrounds on what they think we need to be thinking about. Of course, the thing I had fun with is it got me to do a little bit of, well, it was really not fiction writing. It was nonfiction writing. Um, We set the scene by... um, reading an important message from a concerned city councilman who was really confused about autonomous vehicles. And on the one hand, he wanted to have his shuttle yesterday. And on the other hand, he wanted to make sure that everyone wouldn't be up in arms about it. And uh, the really cool thing is that it was really drawn from conversations that we had had with people who were in the room about what their real life experience was. And boy, did they really get into it. Um, talking about the land use issues, how to deal with the equity issues, how you measure success and evaluate um, what's going on. There were technologists there who could talk about the state of play. And um, 
we made a promise and we're about to keep it um, to take the results of that and turn it into um, a resource that planners can use. Yeah, that's something that we definitely need to mention is that you can go to planning.org slash research slash AV and find links to YouTube videos from the keynote presentation, all three of the panel discussions, as well as the report from the symposium and also a link to the research knowledge base resource collection that we put together, which is a curated collection of resources from all over the Internet, uh, briefing papers, reports, webinars, uh, any type of resource that you can find, we've put together the best ones that can help you in your city start thinking about autonomous vehicles and what you need to do to start planning. And that, you know, one of the really cool things about that is that's a living um, space. And so we want to keep collecting that kind of information. And so if someone has something that they want to share, where should they send it? There is a link on the website that where you can click to submit additional resource suggestions. Uh, that way you can send it to us. We can take a look and see if it's appropriate to add to the collection, uh, which we can do with any of the resource collections on any topic. But with this on autonomous vehicles, it's particularly important because things are changing so quickly. Um, what was new and fresh last year it may not even be relevant today. And so there are things coming out all the time that we want to try and stay on top of. So our members have the most accurate, most up-to-date information. So, you know, when we sat down and talked about what we should be accomplishing with this symposium back in April of last year, we really thought a lot about what would be something that would be useful to planners. There's been a lot of conversation about what the strategies were, for having a safe deployment. And there was a lot of conversation about what the information is about what different kinds of levels of automation were. But we felt like there was really a big gap in terms of usable information, a playbook that any kind of planner could pick up and make sure that these AVs are safe and they benefit the communities. And so I wondered if you could tell us about the playbook that APA has released. Yeah, the playbook is really the summary document containing everything that we learned about the symposium. We've got some good background information on autonomous vehicles for people who may not be completely familiar with the technology and what the issues are. Uh, A nice summary of the symposium discussion. And then the important part is the section about how planners can begin thinking about autonomous vehicles in their communities right now, how you work that into your planning processes, where it's appropriate, what issues you should be thinking about. We have checklists and tables and tools to help you go through that and try and figure out how this relates to your day-to-day work as a planner. As we've been working on the report and finishing up, the thing that's really struck me is um, how much uh, excitement and need there is for this kind of playbook. Um, You know, just recently I've spent time with the city of Chicago talking to them about what their playbook might look like. I've talked to um, others who work in small cities on their transit projects and where this might fit in. I've worked with people in large cities who are trying to understand how to serve areas that aren't served yet. And so I just think this is really wonderful. And I just want to have a shout out to you about uh, not only you're getting this report done, but your inspiration for the podcast and for APA's upcoming educational series. And so I'm looking forward um, to moving forward um, in the podcast. And I wonder if you could just give us a couple of quick ideas about who and what we might be hearing from. Sure. And uh, thank you, Kelly, for uh, agreeing to participate in this and all of your assistance and lending your expertise uh, from your years in the transportation field. It's uh, always important to get other perspectives, even though we're talking about planning as the core issue here. uh, There's more to it than, than just land use. So thank you for that. And in this podcast series, we're going to be trying to identify what are those questions that are out there that planners and city officials have about autonomous vehicles, what are the issues, and then trying to figure out how do we begin going down a path towards solving those issues. We've talked about different types of vehicles, uh, the planning process, 
parking issues. Uh, there are a whole lot of interesting little tidbits related to autonomous vehicles that we can focus on. There are a lot of reasons I'm really excited about this. Some people know me as Mobility Mama um, on Mobility Lab. and Right, what, where you do blogging. Right, where I blog. And I've, I've talked a lot about how AVs fit into the overall transportation system and and thinking about how do we promote active communities in particular. Um, but I also have a new venture, which is um, Mobility E3, also known as Me3. And one of our early um, ones uh, in the series will be with my partner, Corey Clothier, who was the lead, really by himself, on the first autonomous vehicle pilot in the United States. So stay tuned. Uh, We'll hear a lot more about how that worked out and what we can learn from it for pilots in other cities and communities, and also um, have a segment where we talk about all the fun new kinds of vehicles that uh, we really shouldn't be calling driverless cars. We should be coming up with a new name for them. Yeah, we've got a lot to talk about, um, mixing in the technology with the nuts and bolts planning issues. I think it's going to be fun. Awesome. I can't wait. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the American Planning Association podcast. You can listen to past episodes at planning.org slash podcasts. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Have an idea for a podcast? Email them to podcast at planning.org.